talking points on Taiwan. Biden reiterating the U.S. has a one-China policy. It recognizes Beijing is the only, uh, you know, recognized uh, uh, government of China, but also warning Xi against the use of any kind of force to reunify Taiwan uh, into the fold of the mainland. And of course, Xi reiterated Beijing's claims uh, of sovereignty over Taiwan. So constructive. Neither side gave an inch on the Taiwan issue, so that's why they kind of left out the word constructive. They didn't make much progress. Where they did make progress is uh, on agreeing to at least seek a face-to-face -face dialogue between these two. They have not met face-to-face -face since Biden became president in January of 2021. So when will they do that, and how will they do it? Where will they do it? Well, looking at the economic and the meetings calendar, could be APEC in Bangkok in mid-November, could be a G20 in Bali, all also mid-November, or it could be a, yeah. you know, a bilateral meeting uh, separate from that. It will be very interesting. That's when the pomp and circumstance and maybe the deliverables happen. Yeah. That's when the constructive conversations happen. So there is a window of opportunity there. Turning to the domestic Chinese issues, what did we learn from the Politburo meeting uh, in Beijing? Uh, it, it's a key <laughs> moment in the chronology of an events calendar in China. Are we going to see any forthcoming support for the economy? It doesn't look like it doesn't look like it right now. It looks like what this happened was the Politburo is a 25-member, you know, top policy-making body, uh, and essentially they gave their stamp of approval to policies that have already been put in place. There was no new stimulus really uh, announced, and that's why the markets are, are kind of suffering a bit. One of the reasons in Hong Kong today and in China, uh, no new stimulus to prop up the property market, and, you know, Jeffries, among others, analysts who looked at this, they're, they're seeing the the, the communiques coming from the Polar Bureau is that they're more willing to kind of offer, uh, you know, assistance to those home buyers who, have, uh, you know, are boycotting paying their mortgages rather than saving these developers who are in, in debt.